Woo! Watching that boxing workout just wore me out. I had to take a nap. I'm sorry. I'm just waking up. Give me two seconds, everybody. Pavarotti, I'll be right with you with the response video to yours. Just let me wake up. That workout was tiring. That was hard to watch. Okay, Whew. we woke up. I feel so much better. Mind is ready to go. Didn't get the great workout in. Didn't get that box it in like you did, Pavarotti. But guess what? My mind is sharp. And I know. I threw a very hard scenario back at you. That you did a very good job in working your way through. Because I know it's a hard one to talk about. It's a difficult thing. To have to literally look at a situation where our trusted hired officials all the way through law enforcement could possibly, just could possibly be a part of a major crime like the Idaho 4 that took the lives of Kaylee, Maddie, Zanna, and Ethan. When you look at the totality of the scenario, and I want to throw a little bit of my personal experience and what I know a little bit from the wrong side of the train tracks into the very scenario that you had to work your way through. It's not easy to think that a small town community who most likely everybody gets to know each other on a very friendly basis. But then you have to throw two college campuses within that community in an 8 to 10 mile radius of each other. 8 to 10 miles away, you've got two, not just very small universities. These are large state universities that many homegrown students from their very hometowns attend. Now, the problem when a scenario like that happens is you need a pretty solid force of law enforcement officers to be able to handle everything that could possibly happen. And I just know a little bit about that area from my own past personal experiences, and they don't have a large force to work with. Most times, the Moscow Police Department has to actually help the Washington State Police Department. They're out of Pullman. And Pullman's got to return the favor in helping the Moscow, Idaho. And most people would throw up their hands and say, whoa, 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 jurisdictions are all out of place. And Jay Abrey, I know you know what I'm talking about when I say that. But they build special forces that help each other, like the SWAT teams or the different tactical teams that can help in different scenarios. They'll never take the lead in somebody else's jurisdiction, but they'll help. But one of my main thought processes of working through the Idaho 4 case, when I look from afar, is I begin to see not even just little by little, but it blatantly smacks you in the face that some of these individuals that make up the Moscow Police Department are arrogant. They're young, and in my opinion, they're somewhat inexperienced. They possibly don't have the tenure of the experience factor through years upon years of handling cases meaning that they had to interact with people on a constant basis to help them overcome a criminal situation. These that we visually see through many of times on body cam footage 
are interacting with these college students almost from a power-seeking vantage point. When I say power-seeking, I feel as though these law enforcements are trying to make an impact on these college students' thinking processes by putting their foot down as if they better listen or else. When in all reality, to someone like myself that's got a pretty extensive history having to deal with law enforcement, I would have shaken my head and just laughed and said, all you're going to get on me at the end of the day is a misdemeanor with a couple hundred dollar fine. But if you see the way that they're approaching these college kids, who most of them within the area are not hurting financially, and that's why a lot of them don't even have to have jobs. Do you really think a couple hundred dollar misdemeanor noise complaint fine or even an underage with alcohol fine is going to ruffle some of these fingers, uh, feathers? I wouldn't think so, but for some reason we see it happen time and time again blatantly on their own body cam for dumping out an individual's beer without even knowing whose beer it is. They just walked up, took it out, and dumped it out. That could very well have been an adult student's alcohol. You should never have dumped that out without finding out whose it actually was and properly coming to the conclusion either it has to be dumped or it can leave or stay with the person that owns it. And I know, I know if you really rattle it through your brain, when an officer comes to the door of a party and they ask to speak with the occupant or occupants of that home, and they are directly told that none of them are there, that ends the party. It's over. The house has to be cleared. And in some jurisdictions, that's when they'll begin to ID everybody, figuring out who's who, why are you here. If you're underage, you're going to get cited for underage drinking. That's a trespassing charge in most cases, and it can even, if it wants to be pushed to the limit, be a breaking and entering. But it's good to see that they refrained from doing that, but all that they did was harass more individuals. They were pretty rude. And I know the old me, I would have walked by and probably harassed them right back, but many of these kids were there just to have a little bit of fun while doing all they could to get their educations. They were having fun like college kids do. And I do have to respond to the sense that the officers, instead of going to the front door of the residence like is the proper way to do it, they showed all of us just how much they knew, not only the home, but the occupants of that home, by walking the path to the very back sliding door. Yeah, right there where they made the comment that there was no stairs from the back upstairs patio. Third floor, you know, Kaylee and Maddie's room. The possible targets of this very crime and many people's assumptions. But they quickly send for the occupant of the home to come out, which Hunter is so graciously watching as if he's the protector standing there tough and stout not saying a word just making sure nothing gets out of hand we watch the discussion going back and forth between one law enforcement officer and kaylee herself where she does give up her her id he weirdly takes a photograph of it, which many in law enforcement now are beginning to reach out 
and they're making the statement that that is not against the law, that they do that to help them in the paperwork process. But I kind of have a problem with that. I'll get back to it in just a minute before I make my very point about watching the interaction. Not so much from the law enforcement officer that stood to the side that had made the comment about the upstairs downstairs. Even though that kind of caught me off guard about hearing an officer make a statement about no stairs from the upper floor deck. To me, if I had heard that, if it was anybody outside of law enforcement, it would have projected into my mind that they were actually speaking about a code being broken for a fire code or something of that nature because it wouldn't be properly set up for an exit during an emergency. No, but my, my main focus would be on the interaction between the law enforcement officer Rosenthal and Kaylee. You made the very statement, and it kind of makes sense. It was flirtatious. It's an interesting thought. It's truly an interesting thought. I kind of bounce back to that and I say, I think it's actually more than flirtation. To me, it came across as a dispute between two people that had possibly dated and now was no longer in good standing. I almost got this feeling in my stomach as if those two had had a falling out and one of them was happening to move out of the house and possibly the state. And the law enforcement officer wasn't too thrilled about that very idea. I know, I know it's a weird thought. A law enforcement agent, very young in age himself, dating a college senior. And it just didn't happen to work out. We are all human. We do date. Normally at that age, there is some sexual activity that does transpire. And it doesn't always work out. And sometimes people's feelings are hurt. Now, you put into place, and I know it's hard to talk about. I get it. But you put power or the thought of power, anger over being emotionally hurt, with just maybe possibly a little bit of embarrassment that another officer who they ride the beat together every single day possibly knows about. And now you've created emotional chaos within somebody that could snap. Very well could snap. Now, I need to pump the brakes for two seconds to make sure everybody understands. I do not believe every law enforcement agent is a bad person. I do not believe all of them have the tendency of a narcissistic person. I do. You know, when I grew up, when you looked at officers, they were pillars of the community in most senses and most eyes. These are the people that we relied on to not only protect us, but protect our children and our communities. Many, when you thought of it, when kids in the elementary schools were asked what they wanted to be when they grew up, very quickly made the statement they wanted to be law enforcement. But it seems over time, things have changed within law enforcement departments. One, I think the lack of funding truly hurts because not only can you not hire enough but that he can't train them well enough. And unfortunately, at the end of the day, when we look at the Idaho 4 case, 
and it gets put in that ever tightening visual just it's under the microscope you start to see the cracks and the errors that are made even on the night of the crime you have to question yourself because law enforcement was literally right in front of the home as the entire the entire tragedy was developing maybe even happening because many are right there with Ethan's parents and they clearly state the 2 a.m. hour is a dark hour there is so much that could even possibly happen just even driven by what people say that this tragedy was committed in less than 10 minutes so even if we focus at the 2 a.m. hour could you imagine those phone calls that were being sped dialed by both Kaylee and Maddie ended and you still had 10 minutes of that 2 a.m. hour for it all to go wrong I'm here to help you tied with the one lone eyewitness victims comment clad in black now do we really truly all believe clad in black was stated by Dylan I don't know I sway back and forth because that just doesn't seem like her type of terminology but I've never sat down and had a full blown conversation with her so how could I say she didn't say it but if we were to dive into that very PCA why don't you broke out Pavarotti in your video and we go through those facts clad in black is very well documented within that PCA I'm here to help you you're very right that's somebody that's there trying to build confidence from somebody to be able to engage them in a way where the other person who could possibly be on shaky grounds of trust opens up a little bit and gives you a little bit of trust that could possibly be how two more people ended up losing their lives it's a good way to draw people out and then the person that just happened to be leaving through the actual back door seen by the surviving witness was clad in black many law enforcement officers wear a lot of uniforms that are clad in black Many SWAT team members wear uniforms that are clad in black. I mean, just as an overall, I mean, law enforcement is known to be clad in black. I just, myself, I don't always reflect and look at the clad in black law enforcement angle are the ones who literally committed the crime I don't feel that within me I don't feel law enforcement committed the actual crime but I do have this sense within me law enforcement could very easily overlook things in regards to the crime to help those who may have been involved get away they could also very well help clean up a crime scene just by directing what would be necessary to be cleaned before the investigators arrived 
And I told you I would spin back real quick just to kind of give you the feelings that I get from my experiences. Things that I know do happen. Things I've actually seen and been a part of actually happening. Money goes a long way in buying freedom or buying something being overlooked when the person who the money's hand is hitting needs a little extra income, needs a little bit more of a reasoning to turn their vision a different way. I know what a couple of hundred dollars, both in the penitentiary and outside the penitentiary, could buy you if you lay it in the right person's hand. Especially one that's got the power to ensure others look the other way as well. There's a lot of power behind a badge. And when you're told to do something by law enforcement, you typically have to do it because if you don't, you're risking yourself ending up in cuffs. Many don't know the laws that they can put their foot down and stand against law enforcement. But I do see a lot within this Idaho 4 case of young, inexperienced, probably lack of training, that maybe didn't see law enforcement as their forever future. It was just a right then and there in a small community type job until they could get the step to the very next. And I'll tell you what, a handful of green that's spendable goes a very long way in getting away with things that someone might want to get away with. Green can also pay for a framing, for a cleaning, for many of things like false statements, false reports. But yeah, if you really think about the Moscow Police Department though, They'd like to do early day noise complaint warnings. Not even a noise complaint, just a warning at the very house that the worst crime in Idaho history, quadruple homicide, happened at. That house had a lot of law enforcement around it at all times. That's why I ask myself sometimes, was it law enforcement who was stalking and hunting the 1122 King Road? And did they possibly have just enough of a force to take out four people in less than seven minutes and the knowledge of what need to be cleaned? prior to the investigators showing up 12 hours later. That's right. I'm A.R. Hayes. It's Convict Thoughts. Get my energy back with zero boxing workout. You guys have a great night.